The film opens with Mai So being led down the stairs to a gallery with a covered canvas. The woman uncovers the canvas to reveal a very realistic drawing of Mai So called a hyper-realism and done solely with a pencil. The art piece won an award at the gallery's recent contest, but there was no one to claim the prize. There was nothing else to go by except the artist's name, Hai Yoon. The gallery is bent on hiring such extraordinary talent, but they can't seem to reach Hai Yoon, and that's why they've contacted Mai So in hopes that she can provide more information. Mai So claims she and Hai Yoon weren't close, but the gallery has done their research to prove otherwise. The woman shows her a website they found called Summer Milky Way with a lot of content that states both Mai So and Hai Yoon were indeed close friends. Presented with the evidence in a printout form, Mai So decides to keep her stance and states she can't help the woman or their gallery. She's about to leave the building when someone calls her attention. Jin Woo approaches her, and they greet each other in a way that depicts it's been a long time since they've last seen themselves. Jin Woo asks about Ha Yoon, and Mai So mentions they've lost touch. She asks what has Jin Woo around, but his attention is needed, and Mai So uses the opportunity to leave without saying a goodbye. Mai So goes home with the printout, and it moves her to browse Ha Yoon's blog site. She scrolls and finds content talking about the summer of 1998. Hyun depicts the day was slow and uneventful. She remembers it with her in class sketching about, while the teacher drones on and on. A new student comes in and shyly introduces herself as An Mai So from Seoul. There's a spare seat next to Hyun that the teacher directs Mai So to have. Mai So moves towards the seat. Her mother watches her from the doorway, and Mai So seems to bid her time before dashing out the classroom's second door, so her mother is chasing after her. Hyun finds Mai So on a dwarf brick fence. She calls out to her to come get her school bag that she left behind. Mai So would prefer Ha Yoon follows the stairs to meet her, but Ha Yoon admits she's afraid of heights. Mai So teaches her the technique of squinting to deal with her phobia, and both of them walk the brick runway together. They discuss the meaning of their names. Mai So coins that Ha Yoon should mean summer Milky Way. Ironically, Mai So means smile, but Mai So has yet to appear anything but broody. The two girls kick off their friendship, running over to Ha Yoon's house from the rain with a stray kitten in a box they'll most likely keep. Ha Yoon introduces Mai So as her friend to her mother, and soon enough they're sharing baths and discussing stuffy bra tops. Mai So joins Ha Yoon's family for dinner, and the girls exchange broccolis for carrots between themselves. Mai So's mother comes to pick her up and has a word with her daughter in the car. Mai So is hostile, while expressing she ran out of the classroom because she doesn't want to go to school. She's transferred so many times that she doesn't see the point. The mother scolds her for not calling to let her know she was in Ha Yoon's home in the first place, and for not understanding the situation that has them moving around. She remarks this is the last time they'll have to move, but Mai So doesn't believe her. Once her father's health improves, Mai So's mother insists they'll be able to move back to Seoul. Mai So comes over to Ha Yoon's for some hours of playtime. The stray cat they picked up the other day seems to have found a permanent home in Ha Yoon's room. Mai So watches Ha Yoon draw the cat really well and question if her new friend will be an artist one day. Ha Yoon elucidates she won't because her father doesn't support the notion as a paying career. Ha Yoon hands over a sketch pad and encourages Mai So to draw the cat as well, as she believes anyone can draw. Mai So picks crayons and starts to doodle while discussing what they should name the cat. She suggests mom, and although Ha Yoon thinks the name quite strange for a cat, they settle on it. The two friends set their drawings side by side. Ha Yoon's is with a pencil, and Mai So's is with crayons. Mai So has also drawn mom's feelings, a new concept to Ha Yoon. Mai So's mother moves back to Seoul without her, because Mai So insists on staying behind in Jeju to be with Ha Yoon. Mai So becomes like an adopted sister to Ha Yoon, sharing the same room, toys and adventures. Mai So had promised they would never be apart. As the girls get older, Mai So takes painting lessons, while Ha Yoon still does hidden sketches in her notepad while in poetry class. Mai So texts Ha Yoon to skip classes and meet her off school, so Ha Yoon fakes the flu and drives her scooter to catch up with Mai So. Mai So takes over driving, mentioning that Ha Yoon's birthday is the next day, and she should consider taking more adventurous steps like getting her ears pierced. They go play dance steps for a while, then head over to the shop, they'll get Hai Yoon ears pierced in. Mai So who already has piercings, promises the pain is only a sting and temporary. Hai Yoon takes the seat, and but she is still afraid to have it done. The man in charge preps her, and gets just one ear done when Mai So decides to break some valuables in the man's shop. She claims they fell on their own, then chastises the man for keeping them poorly if they were so valuable. The broken items cost $100, and the man doesn't appreciate Mai So's tone. Hai Yoon offers to pay for the damages, but Mai So continues to rile the man. He puts his hands on her in an apprehensive manner, and Mai So decides she and Hai Yoon should just leave. The man isn't having that, and starts pulling at Hai Yoon's school bag in an attempt to get them to stay and pay. They manage to slip out of his grip, and they take off with the man chasing them. Mai So makes a diversion and returns with the scooter to quickly pick up Hai Yoon, so they can make their grand escape from the pissed shop owner. At dinner, 
While Ha Yoon is off to go get some rive juice from the kitchen, Ha Yoon's mom questions Mai So about her work in the hostel. And if her mom calls as often as she should, Mai So simply states she has a roof overhead, and her mom doesn't reach out, which in itself is good news. Ha Yoon's mom advises, it's all up to her as she's beautiful and talented. Ha Yoon sleeps over at Mai So's hostel room. She notes Mai So's paintings on the wall and compliments her work. Mai So feels they're quite childish, and she's most probably not that good. While Mai So tends to the swelling from Ha Yoon's new piercing, Ha Yoon asks about the record playing. Mai So answers it's Janice Joplin, an artist that perished in her prime. She remarks she wants to do the same, get to the peak, then expire young. Ha Yoon doesn't appreciate the cruel joke, and Mai So has to appease her with teasing and tickles. By daylight, Mai So wakes Ha Yoon so they can go get breakfast. She takes Ha Yoon to an abandoned resort and leads her to a room where she set up a table and chairs with a surprise. It's a cake to celebrate Ha Yoon on her birthday, but Mai So has also gotten something extra. Ha Yoon opens the small box to reveal a pair of earrings with her initials. Now it makes sense why Mai So asked her to get her ears pierced. She, however, only got around one piercing. So she asks Mai So to help put on one earring, while Mai So will wear the other until she gets her second piercing. They're snacking in the abandoned resort when Mai So expresses her plans to travel around and paint. She urges Ha Yoon to come with her, as she's also an artist. But Ha Yoon's first excuse is that she's afraid of heights, so she can't fly by air. Mai So suggests trains. But Ha Yoon states her father won't like the idea of her off somewhere painting when she should have a more credible job like teaching. Mai So is teasing Ha Yoon when she realizes her friend has a boyfriend. She clarifies she met a boy from a basketball club early that semester, but they've only met once. There's a club soiree that week though, and she can't deny she's interested in seeing him again or that she likes him. Mai So goes to the basketball court and approaches the boy Ha Yoon likes. He's dismissive at first, questioning if Mai So knows him. She tells him there's a girl who's interested in him, and he'll get to see her at the club soiree. She plays the big sister, warning Ha Yoon to be on his best behavior and not toy around with the girl's feelings. The boy asks if Mai So is indirectly saying she's the one interested in him, but she scoffs and introduces herself as Jenny's Joplin before having to scoot away. At the soiree, the hosts explain the purpose of their gathering is to mingle with the opposite sex. They'll play a game of go stop and wind up a couple or two at the end of the game. The gathered members start playing. The current gets to a guy who points go at Ha Yoon to signify that's who he wants to become a couple with. Ha Yoon points go at her crush and braces herself for a rejection. To her relief, he takes a good look at her and says stop. My so calls Ha Yoon's phone, but she isn't answering. She's out with her crush, Jin Woo, for lunch. While there she elucidates she wants to draw him because that's the best way for her to understand and clarify her feelings for a person. It's dark outside when Jin Woo is still sitting still for Ha Yoon to draw as realistically as possible. She exchanges glances between her sketch and her muse, perhaps not satisfied. She takes a picture of him for later, then gathers up the courage to tell him she likes him. Older Mai So, who is seemingly now a mom, comes home from work to find her daughter asleep. She picks after the toddler's mess, then returns to Ha Yoon's blog, reading from the entry of the summer of 2004. Back then, Ha Yoon thought it best that Jin Woo and Mai So should become friends on her behalf. She introduces them to each other at a concert. Mai So tries to disguise herself with sunglasses, but when Ha Yoon leaves them to chat, Jin Woo points out he remembers her, Janice Joplin. She happens to be manning the bar and Jin Woo orders a drink. Mai So cooks up a strange cocktail with a strong effect that makes Jin Woo wince when he takes it. Mai So starts interrogating Jin Woo, trying to gauge how strong the new couple's interest in each other is. Jin Woo's reply to why he likes Ha Yoon are too vague, and Mai So starts listing her reasons as to why she's taken a liking to her best friend. They argue about Ha Yoon having a mole on her cheek. The performers on stage call on Mai So to join them, and she reluctantly goes, picks up her tambourine, and lets loose on the microphone. Ha Yoon returns to Jin Woo's side. Jin Woo states he's jealous of Mai So's free personality, and Ha Yoon remarks she's also fragile. On closer look, Jin Woo sees Mai So was right. Ha Yoon actually does have a mole on her cheek. The three of them become close, making memories by having fun at the beach and having mobile races on secluded roads. On a particular adventure, they go on a forest trail to make a wish. Ha Yoon starts to get a blister and opts to stay behind. Mai So decides she'll make the wish on all their behalf because she prefers Jin Woo stays with Ha Yoon. Ha Yoon takes an unexpected picture of Mai So as she starts to leave, commenting Mai So looked happy. Ha Yoon waits till Mai So is out of earshot to tell Jin Woo to go after her, so she doesn't get hurt. Jin Woo obliges and follows Mai So to a cave. They're at the cave, Jin Woo on standby, while Mai So pays respect to the sanctuary created. When conversation strikes, Mai So takes interest in a pendant Jin Woo always wears. He explains it was his good luck charm when he was very sick as a child. She takes the pendant in her hand, fondling with it and trying to avoid Jin Woo's eyes. When his stare gets too intense, she pulls away, but he pulls her back into a kiss. The two step out of the cave as if nothing happened. On Jin Woo's inspection, Mai So's scooter has a weak tire, but Mai So insists on riding it. 
Ha Yoon and Jin Woo take his bike, and My So goes ahead of them and wishes them a safe ride. In that moment, Ha Yoon recalls, it was weird seeing My So's back as she was used to having her best friend beside her. My So has to say goodbye to Ha Yoon, as she's chosen to drop out of school with Kai, Hoon, and go pursue her art dreams in Seoul. Ha Yoon is heartbroken to see her leave, but My So assures her, it's not the last time they'll see. She promises they'll stay in touch till they reunite. They write each other letters because My So loses her phone. My So's letter elucidates, she's found somewhere in Seoul to rent and works jobs at clubs her boyfriend. Kai Hoon performs at a hectic schedule with art classes. Ha Yoon receives the letter and writes back that she's taken a college entrance exam, but doesn't know what to major in. Both Jin Woo and her father want her to be a teacher, so it seems that will be her fate eventually, although a dull one. As for My So, her instructor has taken an interest in her skills and wants her to become his protege. She hopes this encourages Ha Yoon to live her life as she really wants. Ha Yoon chooses to go the college route, but complains in her letter that it's truly a dull experience and all she does is doodle. She admits My So expressing freedom while traveling and painting gives her courage somehow. My So's next set of letters allude she's having the time of her life. She tells Ha Yoon her plans are in motion and she's traveling via the Trans-Siberia train. In reality, she gets cheated on by Kai Hoon and moves on to become a cleaner at hotels. She promises to send a postcard from Lake Baikal, but it's bye for now. Jin Woo breaks the news to Ha Yoon that he'll be transferring to Seoul to continue medical school. Ha Yoon writes to Mai So yet again, still under the impression that Mai So is traveling and painting. She expresses her pain with having everyone she loves leave her, almost like a curse. It's been five years since they last saw each other. What she doesn't know is that Mai So has worked numerous odd jobs in that time space and has lost her mom. Ha Yoon bids Jin Woo a farewell. She's sad and teary when he affirms he'll come visit her often. When she solemnly returns home, she finds Mai So has returned. Mai So tells the whole family about her travels over lunch and gifts Ha Yoon's parents Spanish woven hats. For Ha Yoon, she got postcards she promised she'd send. It's much like when they were younger. They ease into their friendship. Goofing around and ready to explore, they board a ship to Busan, have an artist draw them, and visit the aquarium. Mai So wants them to book a cheap motel, but Ha Yoon has them booking a hotel instead. Mai So announces she'll get them dinner since Ha Yoon paid for the hotel. Mai So goes to the bathroom and asks Ha Yoon to help her with a sanitary pad. Ha Yoon finds Jin Woo's necklace in the process, but chooses not to confront her friend. They go out for dinner, but Mai So complains the meals are too expensive. Ha Yoon insists they stay, offering to chip in the bill. Mai So, ever erratic, borrows a shaker and approaches a group of men ready to splurge. She makes a cocktail and puts on a show for them, earning a $120 wine in return. Mai So takes the wine back to the table, but Ha Yoon is upset by the show. Mai So sardonically starts to reveal she's had to put up similar shows to get her daily bread. She doesn't expect Mai So to understand where she's coming from. Tension continues to build around their table. Mai So wants that they order pizzas so she can pay, but Ha Yoon wants steaks. When the waiter comes, steaks it is. Frustrated, Mai So admits Ha Yoon is making it difficult for them to split their expenses 50 50. Ha Yoon is confused why Mai So is making their outing revolve around money, stating they should be having fun, not being so calculated about who's spent on what. Jin Woo calls, and Mai So stands up to step out so Ha Yoon can take the call. Ha Yoon alludes guilt is making Mai So act strange, hinting that she's aware her friend and boyfriend are hiding something from her. Mai So believes Ha Yoon pretends to be naive and oblivious, but in reality, it's all a facade. She accuses Ha Yoon of hiding her true emotions of relief when she had to go away with Kai Hoon. Ha Yoon, who has had enough, storms out. Mai So packs her things from the hotel, and Ha Yoon watches her leave. By autumn, 2012, Jin Woo runs into Mai So. They get chatting, and Mai So reveals she's a consultant for pre-sale lots and does investments as well. He notices she still wears his necklace but says nothing about it. He tells her Ha Yoon is assigned to a school near her Jeju home. He's studying for his medical licensing exam to become a doctor. He goes to Jeju to visit Ha Yoon because she still has a phobia for heights. Mai So remarks Jin Woo still doesn't know Ha Yoon that well, stating her phobia is just an excuse so Jin Woo comes visiting. Jin Woo asks if the friends are still in contact, but the answer is clear from the next scene that shows Ha Yoon trying to find Mai So on social media. Mai So keeps ignoring a call. She explains to Jin Woo that it's her boss, who's also her boyfriend with whom she plans to move to Canada with. When the calls get incessant, she packs her things to leave. She lets on she's happy about Jin Woo and Ha Yoon's engagement, but won't be around for the wedding because she'd be in Canada. Paramedics come rushing into the building next door, and Mai So realizes she should have picked the call. Ha Yoon finds Mai So's social media account. At the same time, Mai So is going through the shock of losing her boyfriend. Jin Woo is present to calm her down and misses Ha Yoon's phone call. Ha Yoon pays an unexpected visit to Jin Woo's apartment and finds him tending to a drunk Mai So. Drunk Mai So hugs Ha Yoon, and Ha Yoon leads her back into the apartment. Locking Jin Woo out, she takes a look around the apartment and finds Mai So's stuff spewed around. Drunk Mai So slurs her lover died. She got kicked out of her apartment and had nowhere else to turn to. She ends up on the toilet floor. 
throwing up into the toilet bowl, annoyed. Hyun hoses her down. My soul lures Hyun to let out all her built up anger, and she eventually does. Hyun needs to know if My So slept with Jin Woo, but My So promises she didn't. She tells My So off for having the audacity to still wear Jin Woo's necklace, and My So retorts, saying Hyun wouldn't understand why she wears it. This pushes Hyun to state My So always wants to play the victim. She assures that no one else cares about My, so the way she does, and My So concedes, they both end up shaken with tears, with My So questioning how their friendship got this torn. Hyun leaves the apartment without reconciling with either My So or Jin Woo. My So hands back Jin Woo's good luck charm necklace to him. She She'd asked for it while in the cave, right after his attempted kiss. She told him she needed it to keep her alive till she was 27. Now, she thanks him for everything and wheels a luggage out of their lives. My So's toddler finds her mom asleep with the laptop on her laps. She cleans her mother's tears and busies the incoming call from Jin Woo. Time back. Jin Woo moved back to Jeju to make it up to Ha Yoon. He proposed to her and professed to make everything right. They move into a house provided by his parents in Jeju and plan to get married after his medical exams. One day, during their time at the dinner table, Ha Yoon starts to realize how incompatible they really are. He wants to move to Seoul, which she wasn't a fan of, and he thought teaching was her true passion. She admits she wants to quit teaching to paint, but while he appreciates her talent, he's much like her father in mindset. She stands him up at the wedding, ghosting the event after leaving behind a sad photograph of her in her wedding dress. Older Jin Woo still has the picture. She decides to leave Jeju. With her bags packed, she apologizes to her mom for disappointing them, but her mom explains everyone rightfully has their own path to follow. Hyun flies to Seoul and uses the address on My So's letters to trace her first apartment in Seoul. Hyun moves in and feels at home, they're knowing My So's touch is all over the place to give her comfort. She starts drawing everyone she misses including her parents, Jin Woo and most intensely, her best friend. Fate has them running into each other, and this time they've silently decided to leave the bad blood behind them. My So takes Hyun to her new place and introduces her to her landlord and fellow tenant, Sung Yoon. All three live together and get along well. My So escorts Ha Yoon to the airport. While there, Ha Yoon gifts My So a first of a pair of earrings with her initials. She points that she's wearing the second of the pair. One ear has her initials, and the other has My So's. Ha Yoon commences her travels and writes to My So. She acknowledges they've interchanged lifestyles now. My So is now rooted in one place, while Ha Yoon is on an adventure. Jin Woo finds My So to her place of work and confronts her about Ha Yoon's whereabouts. He's read her blogs as well and isn't comfortable with how she vanished on everyone. My So maintains she has no idea where Ha Yoon is, but an incoming call from a Ha Yoon gives her away. Jin Woo sticks around long enough to realize he has a child with Ha Yoon. She's the little girl that's been in My So's custody and bears the same name with her biological mother. When fate had brought the friends together, Ha Yoon had been heavily pregnant. My So took Ha Yoon back to her apartment who relays she left Jin Wu at the altar before she knew she was pregnant. She depicts him a good and loving man, but she needed to be sure she was comfortable being the person prior decisions were leading her to be. She reveals she knew all along what happened in the cave. She wasn't oblivious to My So's feelings for Jin Wu and hated how My So started to drift away. She hated My So with no proper reason, and My So admits so did she. They're lying in bed with teary faces inches apart when Ha Yoon admits she wiggled her way into My So's life because there's so much more to show her. Her unborn child's nickname is Myso. Myso waits outside the operating room. The practitioners file out and one informs her the patient suffered heavy blood loss. It was tough, but both mother and baby are fine. Hyun has a girl and Myso proposes they could raise her together, even though Hyun teases Hyun is barely raising herself. Myso leaves and returns with some things for Hyun and the newborn, but finds the hospital room empty. In her mode of panic, she gets a call from Hyun asking her to keep her promise. My So had given her the freedom to do whatever she wanted after the baby was born. Hyun chooses to ghost and leave the child in My So's care. My So doesn't even get the privilege of a proper goodbye because Hyun admits it'd make it harder to leave. My So has to watch from a window. Her friend get into a taxi, sparing a longing stare before she drives out of My So's life. My So tells Jin Woo that this was the last time she saw Hyun and she has no idea where she is now. Jin Woo asks to visit his child occasionally, and My So lets him, but states it was Ha Yoon's request that the little girl doesn't get to know the truth. My So walks into the hospital room and finds the sheets drenched in blood. She frantically asks questions about the patient in room 201. She's told Ha Yoon is in the operating room due to heavy blood loss. My So rushes towards the operating room, but meets bad news. Ha Yoon didn't make it, only the newborn survived. At the reception, My So has to fill in some legal documents. Ha Yoon passed away at age 27. This is the true story. While packing up Ha Yoon's things from the hospital room, she finds a box with earrings bearing her initials. There's a note from Ha Yoon thanking her for their friendship. This is how My So really received the earrings from Ha Yoon. My So returns back to Jeju. Mom, the cat, has passed away too. 
Ha Yoon's mom gives Mai So the address of the house Ha Yoon was living in, as she would like for Mai So to retrieve Ha Yoon's belongings. Mai So follows the address, and it leads her to the familiar house that Ha Yoon successfully turned into a home. She goes on Ha Yoon's laptop and finds the blog site. She's the one that writes and uploads the entries. She also finds the canvas with an unfinished drawing of herself and finishes it off for Ha Yoon. She's the one that enters it into the contest. Mai So and her daughter attend the art exhibition housing Ha Yoon's drawing. The curator lets Maiso know that Hai Yoon responded to the gallery's email, declining their offer, but open to show them her newest work. Mother and daughter get to see drawings of Hai Yoon's mom, Jin Woo, and mom the cat all on display. In a different corner is the drawing of Maiso from the surprise picture Hai Yoon took years back. Her head is angled, so Ha Yoon's initials from the earring shows. Mai So stares at her younger self with a different kind of longing. Meanwhile, Mai So's imagination keeps Hat Yoon alive and traveling. 